Are you using the histogram on your digital camera? Do you even know what a histogram is? This video will give you answers to those questions and more, so do not go away. Hi, I'm Barry Callister of Photographer's Freedom, taking you from beginner to better to business. I'm about to show you both what a histogram is and how to use the histogram on my Nikon D5200 here. If you're not a D5200 user, please stick around. Histograms are the same across all digital cameras and you will learn how to use and read the histogram on your camera. At the end of this video, I'm going to give you a tip that will help you figure out your exposure before you take a shot, so stick around for that. So what the heck is a histogram? A histogram is a digital representation of the brightness values in any particular image. It's quite simply a graph of your exposure. On the horizontal axis, it shows pixel brightness. On the left are your dark areas or your shadows. On the right are the lighter areas or the highlights. And in the middle section are the midtones. The vertical axis shows the number of pixels within those different brightness areas across your image. So if you have a dark image, there will be a lot of information over here on the left of the histogram. If your image is brighter, there will be a lot more information over on the right hand side. But why on earth would you want to use a histogram in the first place? I mean, you can take a shot look at the LCD screen and check if it's exposed correctly or not, can't you? Of course you can. There are two problems with that, however. Firstly, you can't trust your eyes. Secondly, you can't trust the LCD screen either. Your eyes don't know if your shot is exposed correctly or not, and the LCD screen doesn't either. Depending on the lighting in the area you're viewing your LCD screen and also the brightness setting you have your LCD screen set to, your images can look brighter or darker than they actually are. The histogram is your new best friend. It will tell you accurately if your photos are exposed correctly or not. Like it, love it, hang out with it, take it to the movies, buy it popcorn, it's your new best friend. Now just bear with me if you're not a Nikon D5200 user as I'm about to dive into the camera here and show you how to bring up the histogram and how to read it. If you want to know how to bring up the histogram on your camera, check your camera's manual. So if I take a photo with the D5200 here and then I press play to view it on the LCD screen, it looks fine, right? but we can't trust our eyes or the LCD screen. So how do we view the histogram? Well, there are various display options here within the Nikon D5200 and I can access them by pressing up or down on the multi-selector. Your camera will probably have a similar way of accessing these different views. So if I press the play button and view my image and press down on the multi-selector, I get this histogram view. There are four different graphs here. The top one is the RGB value, so that is showing all the brightness values of red, green and blue in my image. Under that we have the red channel, the green channel and the blue channel. They show the brightness values of red, green and blue respectively. So how do you know if your image is exposed correctly or not? Well, you need to look at the right and left hand sides of the histogram. If you overexpose the highlights in the image, meaning they are just too bright and there is no detail in those areas, there will be some information pushing up against the right hand side of the histogram. If you underexpose the shadows, meaning there are, they are too dark and there is no detail in those areas, there will be information pushing up against the left hand side of the histogram. Let's have a look at that in Lightroom. I'll use this image of an osprey I took last week at Woolgooga Headland in New South Wales. You can see the histogram up here in the right hand corner. Everything is sitting relatively in the middle. There is nothing pushing up against the right hand side or left hand side of our histogram. If I grab the white slider down here and start bringing up the whites, you will see we start to get this line creeping up the right hand side of the histogram. This means that we're overexposing some bright areas in this picture. 
If I turn on show highlight clipping there, you can see it's these areas here in the waves and these on the bird's neck and head and also some here in the rocks as well. I'll just turn that off and I'll reset the whites by double clicking there. Now I'll grab the black slider and drag it down. You can see now we have a line creeping up in the left hand side of our histogram. This means we're underexposing the shadows or darker parts of our image. I'll switch on shadow clipping and you can see it's these areas here in the rocks and also these bits here in the darker parts of the bird's feathers. So that is what you don't want your histogram to look like. Nothing creeping up on the right or left hand side. But does that mean that you want everything sitting nicely in the middle then? No. We'll go back to the camera now and take a look at some shots I took recently. I'm going to do a little pop quiz here, so pay attention. I'm going to bring up a few shots on the camera and I want you to guess whether the histogram will have peaks in the middle, to the right or to the left. So we'll look at this image here first of these waves. Now do you think that the histogram for this image will have information more towards the right hand side or towards the left hand side? If you said to the right hand side, you are correct. You can see how it's a little bit right of the middle and of course it would be. We have all this bright area here in the waves and there's not a lot of shadowy areas in this image, only these rocks here. So that's why the information is sitting a little bit more to the right. Now we'll find another image. We'll use this one here. Now do you think this will be to the right or to the left or in the middle? If you said more to the left, you're correct. Because of more shadowy areas in these rocks here, you've still got all these highlights, the brighter areas of the waves here, and the water back here in the background is also sort of mid-tone, so that's filling out this area here. So the histogram's a bit more spread out because there's more light and dark in that image. And we will do one more. We'll just find one that might have, here we go, that one will do. Now do you think this one, the histogram for this one, will it sit more to the right or to the left? If you said to the left, of course you are right. You can see it's mostly sitting to the left of centre and that is because we don't have a lot of highlights in this image. It's all this dark grass, this dirt here and the bird in the middle there which you can't really see, I'll zoom in for you and there is the little birdie in the middle. Now you can see also when I zoomed in, see the histogram changing? What will happen is whatever area you are zoomed into, the histogram will reflect that area. So you can see it's got a little bit more brighter because of the highlights in the bird. Here he's, like his chest feathers are a little bit brighter. So that's what will happen too. So you can see from this that you don't always need to have your histogram sitting dead center. It will depend on what kind of photograph it is. Is there a lot of dark things in the photo or is there a lot of bright things in the photo? Now you know how to use the histogram in your digital camera and also why you should use it. I did promise you a tip about figuring out your exposure before you take a shot, so I'm going to do that right now. When you look through the viewfinder of your camera or on the live view screen, you will see this indicator. This is your exposure meter or your exposure indicator. If the little marker below the zero there is in the middle, you're correctly exposed. If it's over to the left hand side, you are underexposing. And if it's over to the right hand side, you are overexposing. So all you have to do is try to keep it in the middle for a good exposure. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do so and ding that notification bell. That makes sure that you get notified whenever I release a new video, which is 1am Australian Eastern Daylight Time every Friday. Until next time, I'm Barry Callister of Photographer's Freedom. Get out there, take some wicked shots, and I will see you soon.